Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at completing the unit circle. And what it means when we're talking about the fact that it's the unit circle, it means that the radius of the circle is 1. So when we're talking about the unit circle, we're talking about a circle in the coordinate plane that would have four endpoints of 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. And then there's a whole bunch of other key points that we want to look at. So this is a blank unit circle. And again, what this means is that this is a length of 1, this is a length of 1, this is a length of 1, this is also 1. I think you get the idea. Any radius that we see is going to be a length of 1. And we look at uh, specific values on the unit circle that come up a lot, and it's just good to know how to complete it. So what we're going to do is we're going uh, we're gonna to start in order of going by 30 degree increments. So we're going to say, we're going to start here at 0 degrees and 0 radians, and this is the point 1 comma 0. So the leftmost thing is always degrees, the second from the left is the radians, and then the thing inside parentheses is going to be the ordered pairs that are associated with each of these key points. The next one we're going to look at, so like I said, we're going to go by 30 degree uh, increments, so this one is 30 degrees. You might recall that 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over 6. If you were not sure of that, you would take 30 degrees and you would multiply it by pi over 180 to figure out the corresponding radian measure. So the degrees would cancel, that would give us 1, that would give us 6, and thus we get pi over 6. Ugh, I cannot do pi's very well. Bear with me, pi over 6. Okay, and then the next tricky thing is figuring out what the coordinates at this particular point are. And so one thing we can do is we can use the fact that we have the hypotenuse of a right triangle if we go up like that and down here. So we know that the, the x and y coordinates are going to be something less than 1 because if it was 1 it would have gone all the way over here. Um, we know that this is a length of 1 and the hypotenuse would have to be the largest side. And so what's going to come in handy, and I'm going to make an assumption that you're familiar with 30, 60, 90 right triangles. With 30, 60, 90 right triangles, so the angle measure that's 30 degrees is the angle between that positive x-axis and that radius. So this is 30 degrees. And what you might recall is that the side opposite 30 degrees is half the length of the radius. So this here is 1 half, that's the y-coordinate, so I'm going to say 1 half. And then if you know your 30, 60, 90, you also know that the side opposite the 60 degree, so we would know this is by default the 60 degree angle, to be root 3 uh, over 2 in this case, since it's going to be 1 half times root 3. And this is corresponding to the x, so this would be root 3 over 2. We're going to skip the middle measure for now. We're going to go to the next measure up here, because remember I said we're counting by 30s, and so that this, this middle one is not 30, this is going to be our 60 degrees. 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over 3 radians. Pi over 3. And now, because we're looking at now 60 degrees, this is kind of like the inverse of the 30 degrees, right? Because if we were to draw this right triangle up here, um, this would be, this whole thing would be 60 degrees, this would be 30 degrees, so that means that x and y are switched from when we looked at the 30 degrees. So x will be 1 half, and y will be root 3 over 2. Okay, continuing on, um, up at the top, we should know that this is 90 degrees, and 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. And this, we don't have to use anything fancy, we should know that this is 0, 1, right? It's the unit circle, and we're on the y-axis, the positive y-axis, so it's 0, 1. Yay, that one was done. All right, moving along, adding 30, that puts us at 120 degrees. 120 degrees is equivalent to, if you don't know, come off to the side, 120 degrees over 1 times pi over 180. The degrees would cancel, this would be 2, and this would be 3. So we end up with 2 pi over 3. So here we get 2 pi over 3, and then we want to know the corresponding measure. Well, if we were to draw this triangle, so going up there, cutting down here, it's actually a reflection of that triangle from the 60 degrees, um, but in this case, x would be po uh, negative. So it's going to be the same coordinates as the 60 degrees, except because we're in quadrant 2, x is negative. So it's going to be negative 1 half. I'm going to put it up and above. 
I know I was using this as a fraction bar, but now I'm not. And it will still be a positive y, so root 3 over 2 will stay positive. The next one we're going to look at, we're going to skip the middle one. We're going to go down here. We're going to add 30. That gives us 150. If you're not sure what 150 is in terms of radians, come off to the side. 150 degrees over 1 times pi over 180. And, oh, sorry, I wrote 180. 180. Um, one, fifth, 150 and 180 are both divisible by 1030. So we can divide by 30, and that would give us 5. Divide by 30, we would get 6. So we end up with 5 pi over 6. So the equivalent radians here is 5 pi over 6. And if we look at this triangle, you might notice that it looks like the reflection of the 30 degree triangle, and that's exactly what it is. This right here is 30 degrees, up here is 60 degrees, so it's going to have the same coordinates as the 30 degree, except x is negative. So instead of positive root 3 over 2, this one was going to be negative root 3 over 2, and then the 1 half would stay positive since it's above the y-axis. So we have negative root 3 over 2 and 1 half. Going 30 degrees further would take us here to 180 degrees, and 180 degrees is equivalent to pi, which we should know from these unit ratios that I keep using. And this would be zero, uh, nope, this is negative one, we're on x, so it's negative one comma zero. Okay, we're getting there. We're making progress. We're going to add 30 degrees, we're going to get 210 degrees. If you don't know what 210 degrees is, that's okay, but just for the sake of the fact that I don't want this to take forever, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you it's 7 pi over 6. You could figure that out by, of course, multiplying by pi over 180. And if you were to look at this triangle, which one does it kind of look like? It kind of looks like our 30, 60, 90, but this time we're in quadrant 3 where both x and y are negative. So that means that this is going to be the same as our 30 degree triangle, just like we saw in quadrant 1, but both x and y are negative. So we're going to say negative root 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Skipping the middle one, we're going to add 30. This gives us 240 degrees. 240 degrees, degrees is equivalent to 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3. And if we were to draw this triangle uh, at the origin, we would have a 60 degree angle. So it's going to um, be a double reflection of the 6, 30, 60, 90 um, up here in quadrant 1 that went all the way up here. Uh, but because we're in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. So this one's going to be negative 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. And if you're starting to see a pattern with these x's and y's, that's good because that's what we, we, we are looking for is there, there is going to be a pattern. So we want to keep that in mind. Adding 30 more degrees, this brings us down to 270 degrees, which is equivalent to 3 pi over 2. And we're going down one unit, uh, which means we're going to be at 0, negative 1. Then over here, oh look, I already wrote in 300 degrees, that's lovely. Oh, it doesn't erase either. Okay, well, that one will be 300 degrees, and 300 degrees is equivalent to 5 pi over 3. And if we were to look at this triangle that would form at the origin, the origin would have a 60 degree angle. We're in quadrant 4 where x is positive and y is negative. So this one's going to be positive 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. Adding 30 more degrees, we're going to come up here at 330 degrees. 330 degrees is equivalent to 11 pi over 6. And if we were to look at this little triangle, we would have at the origin a uh, degree measure, oh, I'm going to cut right through it, a degree measure of 30 degrees. Here again, x is positive, so we're going to have root 3 over 2, just like we saw with our 30 degree triangle, and negative 1 half. So that was just counting by 30, so going around the unit circle, increasing the degree measure by 30 degrees. And then for the radians, what we were actually doing is we were increasing by pi over 6. So we had 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. So we're really counting by pi over 6s, um, but we're, we can simplify every other one. So that's what ends up happening. Okay, but we left the middles blank, so we still have four more to complete before we're done with our unit circle. Um, the other four, now we're going to count instead of by 30 degree measures, we're going to count by 45 degree measures. So this one's going to be 45 degrees. 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4. And then what's the corresponding measure? Well, if we were to look at the triangle, and this triangle here, the purple one, this is an isosceles right triangle with a radius of 1. If we wanted to know what the sides were, so maybe you know the ratio of a 45, 45, 90, um, but if you don't, just what you could do is use Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus x plus 
at y squared equals 1, but x and y are the same. So you could say x squared plus x squared equals 1. That would be 2x squared equals 1. That's x squared equals a half. Take the square root of both sides. We end up with both of them being root 2 over 2. So we have root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. The next 45 degrees would put us back at 90. We've already done that, so we're going to add 45 degrees to that, and we're going to end up at 135. 135 degrees is equivalent to 3 pi over 4, and again, we can we can figure these out by counting by pi over 4s. So here at the beginning, we have 0 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, this is 2 pi over 4, now we're at 3 pi over 4. And for these middle ones, x and y are always going to be root 2 over, some variation of root 2 over 2. Whether it's positive or negative, we just have to ask ourselves in what quadrant what's positive and what's negative. And in quadrant 2, x is negative. So this is going to be negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Keep in mind this is a negative sign. Negative root 2 over 2. The next 45 degrees would take us to 180, so we can skip that because we've already done it. The next one will be 225 degrees. And again, that's going to be equivalent here. We had 3 pi over 4. Pi would be 4 pi over 4. We must be at 5 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4. In quadrant 3, everything's negative. So we're going to have negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. The next 45 degrees would put us at 270. After that, we're going to be at 315 degrees, which will be equivalent to 7 pi over 4. And in quadrant number 4, x is positive, y is negative. So we're going to have positive root 2 over 2, comma negative root 2 over 2. So the unit circle does look really intimidating, um, but really if you can just see the patterns, it's not going to be that bad. Good luck, and make sure you know how to do this because I'm sure your instructor will want you to know how to complete this.